This is the Donna DLP124B in pink. First things, it comes with a case. So you've got this case that is kind of padded, but not. So it's, it feels like there's some sort of paper in there. So I wouldn't call it padding, but it's certainly more than a bag. In the pocket, you've got a strap and a cord sheet that goes uh, on the guitar. So I took that off before filming. And you get a cable as well, which I think is really cool. That's not one of those really cheap molded cables. It is, in fact, let's open it up. Ah, uh, a cable that would probably set you back maybe 10 bucks. So there's 10 bucks right there. There's about three or four bucks. And there are some free cords. Any more surprises? An Allen key for the truss rod adjustment. Right, Donna did send this guitar to me. They asked me to review it, but they're not paying me for this. And as always, my thoughts, words, and bum notes are my own. Now, I wasn't gonna go through with this review because I hate this guitar. And I don't say that often, but the reason I hate it is that when I took it out of the box, out of the case, and tried to film this video the first time, I ran my hand up the neck and the frets were so sharp that I cut my hand. It sliced it open, there was blood everywhere, and I couldn't play guitar for a few days. And it means that the guitar was not playable out of the box. I filed and, set and polished these, I didn't do these. If I place that down there and then take a pick, you can run this up the neck, and then it gets stuck, because I didn't do that fret. So there's so much sticking out there. Yeah, can you hear that? and on the other side. Yeah, so just those two. But I might be the one in a million, or this might be the standard. Regardless, I know you wanna hear how it sounds and how it plays, so um, let's plug it in, tune it up, and uh, dive in, as they say on YouTube. Okay, so it's kind of in tune, but um, as with every new guitar, you should pull out the strings. I'm gonna do that so it doesn't slip out of tune again. And by doing that, I can tell you that the strings are not great. So if you do buy these string, this guitar, definitely change the strings out or get someone who knows what they're doing to change the strings out for you. Right, retuning time. It's still not quite there, so I'm gonna bend it around and play around and get these strings to go in. Again, put some decent strings on any budget guitar and you will have made it a better guitar. Another thing to point out after tuning it is that these machine heads, they're quite sharp on the end as well. There's a, there's a fair old corner on that, and I, I don't like the shape of those at all. That, that's, I, I like the look, but that was digging in my finger, and I promise you, I'm not a complete crybaby. You know, I've, 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 I've survived things. Right, it's taut. I like the string tension. There is not a lot of top end. There's a lot of low mid, so it's a very sort of low endy guitar without there being much bass. Regarding woods, um, the specs of this are kind of hard to find. And if you look on places like Amazon and, and Donna's website and other places that are selling this guitar, they're not all the same. But apparently this is an Akume neck, which has a scarf joint just there. And it's apparently a poplar body. But that really feels like maple to me. Like, really. Like, I, I don't believe that isn't maple. As for the fretboard, it's uniformly dark, and it looks somewhere between rosewood and mahogany and rich light, that sort of area. But it's apparently perilla. I, I, I don't know what that is. So, perilla. Please let me know in the comments what perilla is. I always thought it was a, a large ape. We've got two humbuckers, don't know what they are. We've got volume and tone, and there's no pulley, pulley, push, push on that. That's a three-way switch to switch between the pickups. Then we've got a standard Les Paul bridge and stop tail. Then we've got a bolt-on neck, if you haven't noticed already. There, so four bolts and some access point cavity that we'll have a look at in a bit. That's funny, it says QC passed. They didn't obviously check the frets and they didn't bleed everywhere. Right, um, I'm gonna play it through some amps. For amps today, we're looking at the Black Star St. James EL34, the Laney Super Cub, and the Boss Katana. Uh, I'm running all those through vintage V30s, just here, Harley Benton 2x12 cab, and uh, let's hear what it sounds like. Right, the intonation is definitely not great on that. The string action's okay. Um, I'm, I don't know. 
it's sharp. I should probably fix that before going any further. I don't want to upset anybody's ears. So yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make excuses for the guitar, but because I like the shape and I like the color and I, I, I like the weight, I am going to persevere with it. But at this point, I don't think you should buy one. Huge problems. In fact, if you're a beginner watching this and thinking about buying your first guitar and wondering what it is I've just done, uh, I've adjusted the intonation. This is not something a beginner should be doing and it is something a guitar technician will do for you at the mere cost of some money. I can't get the saddles back far enough to make this in tune all the way up the neck. So we'll just, I'm gonna show you the tuner on screen. Right, so here's the tuner, canvas tuner from Walrus. Um, there, right. In tune, in tune at the harmonic, fretted 12th on the top E string, not quite in tune. So low E, in tune. 12th, not in tune. I am going to persevere, but it's not going to be perfectly in tune. I might have what we would call a lemon here. So let's at least hear what it sounds like before I completely trash it. Okay, wow, um, I can finally say something really good. I like both sounds. The, the bridge pickup is not too bright and not in any way cheap sounding. The neck pickup is wonderfully warm without being too bassy and that in between sounds to me almost out of phase. I wouldn't be surprised if it is out of phase and it's, um, it, it definitely needs some sort of bluesy thing on that. So let's switch over to the Laney and uh, get a bit of rock and blues and some gain. Like every good Les Paul, the G string is out of tune again. knock the gain down a little bit and do some more sort of low gain blues. Uh, yeah, so that's still all the way up. It sounds like a sort of lo-fi black keys kind of sound. So if you're looking for something sort of dirty, grungy, bluesy. This is good because it didn't sound too too rocky, like on that sort of more high gain. This, it sounds a bit weak. A bit plastic, a little bit, yeah, it's not making the Laney sound great, but on this. That's almost clean. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's enough for me to decide that the sound is not overly great, uh, but I think the pickups could be closer to the strings. I like that sound on that low gain. Whoops. <laughs> But sound-wise, if you're expecting a Les Paul, this is not it. Um, it's not even sort of Les Paul. It's more P90, which is kind of cool. 
Um, but let's take a look inside it and have a look at the quality of the wiring because that is important if you're buying a budget guitar because if it fails on you, you're in trouble. It's gonna end up costing you money, which might have been spent on a better guitar. Whoa, all right, it's pink all the way around. We've got some sort of spacer here. Maybe that's, that's too deep. Okay, so we've got some mini pots, more wire than we actually need, which is better than not enough. Then the soldering job, particularly on this switch, is barely ac uh, adequate. It should be all right, but that could be problematic at a later date. But all in all, that's pretty much what you should expect from a guitar at this price. We need to check out the jack, however. So that's slightly more worrying because this is the earliest fail point on a guitar because you're, you're constantly plugging and unplugging. If that is too weak and it breaks, a beginner guitar player will probably give up and I've seen worse, I've seen a heck of a lot better. Yeah. So regarding the electronics of this guitar, I think barely adequate is the term I'd like to use. And it's kind of what I expected from this price range. But when you get a guitar from other brands, they tend to be a little better than this. Not much, but a little better. So uh, I'm not very happy with electronics in this. So the Donna DLP124. Not a great guitar. The fret sprout, sharp frets, cutting into my hand, unforgivable. And I should have just sent it back at that point, but I like to give you an out of, almost out of the box experience, um, or at least a, a real authentic experience. So that, unforgivable for this particular guitar, but it might not be representative of the model. I might have the worst one they ever made. I might have the best one, but it's more likely that I have an average model and with you know a big defect. That being said, the tuners hold. There's a bit of slippage, but generally speaking, they hold. Still in tune, I'm happy with that. Intonation was out. Action was good to what I expect on this guitar. So the intonation is a problem. Maybe the bridge is in the wrong place. If I took these springs out, I could get those saddles back further. That would definitely make it more uh, in tune with itself. As for the electronics, absolutely superb. Pickups are to taste. It's not a rock machine. It is an indie rock machine. And it's a little bit emo because, you know, ouchie. Right, um, if you want to buy this guitar, I'll find some links somewhere and put them in the video description. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up if it helped you, and I will see you later on. There's the button to subscribe. Have a good time, whatever you're doing. Bye.